Yeah, and that's gonna do it. Chandler has a wisp and a resto angel, and no life gain to be seen. Although, if you are Chandler, the the fourth time was a charm on the resto angel. So uh, Josh is gonna take this match two one after a very intense game three and two, and uh, we are going to open up our very last pack of Magic Origins. And hopefully it's another Planeswalker because now I'm excited. Opened up a Chandra earlier. The other ones haven't been too great, but you know, you take what you can get. Up one more time. Get rid of that uh, that life counter screen. All right, so one last pack of Magic Origins. Again, I'm just gonna skip the commons and uh, go right to the uncommons and the rares. Uh, our first uncommon is Sky Center Spider, four and a green green, Vigilance Reach six six. Uh, pretty good for a late game uh, green card. Um, this might be the biggest spider in the core set in recent memory, uh, at least that I can uh, that I can remember. If I'm wrong, I'm sure you guys will tell me. But uh, our second uncommon is Call of the Full Moon, one in a red enchant creature gets plus three, plus two, and has trample at the beginning of each upkeep. If a player casts two or more spells last turn, sacrifice Call of the Moon. It's a nice little red enchantment for limited. Uh, our uncommon. Or our last uncommon is Gold Force Sentinel. It's a 6 mana, 4-4 four, four flyer. Not too bad, really. Uh, another okay limited card. Our rare is Dwin Guiltleaf Dane. 2 green green for a 3-4 reach. Other elf creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. When a Dwin and Guiltleaf Dane attacks, you gain 1 life for each attacking elf you control. Uh, I feel like that card has a home. I, it hasn't been seen yet. But, uh... But that card definitely has some constructive playability, I'm sure. And uh, maybe after Zendikar, if the elves make a, uh, a strong appearance there, we can kind of see that appear. We actually got our first foil of the day, which is weird. Uh, Subterranean Scout, not a bad little common. Uh, definitely has limited playability. One in a red, two one. When Subterranean Scout enters the battlefield, target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. Um, so not bad. Uh, just tip card. Sad. No tokens. So that is our uh, our five packs of Ma Magic Origins. Can't be too upset though because we did open up a Planeswalker uh, in Chandra Fire of uh, Kaladesh. Where is it at? So once again, our rares were Chandra, Fire of Kedalish, uh, Dwin, Guildleaf Dane, Jace's Sanctum, Knight of the White Orchid, and Abbot of Carol Keep, which is probably our, I don't know, the only really bad rare is Jace's Sanctum. Knight's okay, Abbot's Seems okay. Dwin should be good, but just isn't right now. Games are still happening. I'm just waiting on an update to see what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to disappear real quick. When he's over to the shop, and I will be right back. Stay tuned.
Guess who's back? Never mind, there's not chair. Yeah, there's not a lot of room. Like, yeah, maybe. Alright, so right now I have nobody on the camera. So this is incredibly boring, and I'm sure you guys are bored to death. Um, but I'm back. And it looks like Minecraft's about to head out. Yeah, 6 a.m. comes early. 6 a.m.? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hear that. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have one more match, it looks like. Yeah, you're good to take that. Um, so, after this match, uh, we will probably have to close, or, uh, be done with the, um, stream for tonight, because, uh, one, it'll probably be very close to the time that Rare Drops closes, and that is where we're actually streaming from. Uh, the players are playing in Hometown Hobbies, but right now we're streaming at Rare Drops, um, so when they close we have to quit and after this match it'll probably be like 10 minutes to close so I'm not going to try to start another match uh, but right now I'm just trying to see who we have on camera and I should be able to tell from the first uh, land drop or so and I see a poison token on the uh, table so there's a good chance that we might be seeing infect and I think Cody Hill is on the right side of your screen. So. Yeah, okay, so we're going to have the Battle of the Cody's. Um, Cody Dickerson, who we saw at our Star City Games IQ this past weekend, is, uh, if I had to guess, is playing what she's known for now in this area is Infect. And this is, once again, just a complete guess. I don't know for sure. And then on this side, we have Cody Hill, and he is going to be playing uh, Mardu Burn. At least that's what he was playing this past week. So I'm going to say that he's playing the same thing, but I don't know for sure. Uh, actually, I don't even have life totals on top, so you can't even see that. Hey, there we go. Um, so yeah, we're just going to uh, go right into this. And uh, this is probably going to be our last game of the night, unfortunately. I'll be able to at least tell you all who top aided, uh, but we will probably not see another round being played tonight on stream. So I'm sorry for that, but thank you everyone who stuck with us. You all are superstars, and we appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, here we go. We're ready to start this fifth and final round of our modern FNM here at Hometown Hobbies in beautiful, luxurious... Just joking. It's not very luxurious, but it's still very beautiful. Huntington, West Virginia. Uh, we're located on 4th Avenue as Cody takes a mulligan down to 6 and it does look like she is playing Infect um, yeah it is Burn versus Infect okay um, but yeah so we're located on 4th Avenue and uh, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what the restaurant and shop situation looks like on our little block here so if you're walking from 11th toward 12th Street on 4th Avenue you will find a pizza place followed by a retro video game store known as Rare Drops, followed by a card shop known as Hometown Hobbies, then a comic book shop known as Purple Earth Comics. Uh, that's four... Like, what is that? That has to be a perfect square of uh, just nerddom. You have pizza, followed by video games, followed by card games, followed by comics. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. And then, of course, now hear this. That's at the corner. You have to know all of your uh, Weird Al Yankovic songs. Just joking. I love Weird Al. Who doesn't? He's an awesome guy. As we're going to see a fetch land shock going down to 17 life. Uh, Cody's going to start the game uh, three in the hole, but that is okay because he's playing against Infect and it is doubtful, not impossible, but doubtful that uh, he will be dealt 20 points of regular damage this game. Uh, so Monastery Swift Spear is going to come down and stroke for one. Knocking Cody Dickerson down to 19. She's going to crack her fetch at the end of turn. Probably grabbing a tap breeding pool if I had to wager. Um, as she's going to go to 18. Yeah, I have that. <laughs> at first I thought she I had her marked at uh, 19. But yeah, she goes down to 18. Uh, grabbing that tap breeding pool. Uh, that might telegraph a turn 2 blighted agent. Which would be a very good start for her. Assuming that she has like a mutagenic growth or something to protect it. She does have an Ink Moth Nexus in hand. She draws a Pendlehaven for turn. Uh, so, Ink Moth Nexus with Pendlehaven is pretty good. Uh, if she does have 
Ink Moth Nexus into Blighted Agent, that is also really good. But no, Pendlehaven comes down instead of Ink Moth. <laughs> into Blighted Agent. Um, so yeah, she might have just needed the extra green to cast things like Might of Old Crozas, Ground Swells, etc. And it looks like Cody's going to shock himself, or uh, Lightning Bolt himself again down to... No, he's just going to take one. Never mind. Uh, he's just going to take one down to 16. He's going to grab a mountain. Uh, I guess that once you have your white, uh, especially if you have the green in your hand, you don't necessarily need anything other than mountains. There's no point to take the extra damage because there's just no point. Uh, so you're going to do a quick cut, and Cody's going to cast an Searing Blaze, dealing 3-3, three and three, triggering the prowess. So Cody's going to go to 15 from the damage and then 13 from the attack, uh, as Cody marks himself. Cody's got confused. <laughs> now, it should be uh, 13 to 16 if I am correct. Actually, uh, let's see. She was at 18. Yeah, okay. So 13 to 16. Cody Hill leading on your right, playing Burn. Cody Dickerson on the left, playing Infect. Uh, Cody is going to play an Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, she will tap a green using Pendlehaven to cast Noble Hierarch. And I can't see what else is in her hand, but that might just be a pass, unless she has an infect creature, which she does not. Uh, so Cody draws an Eidolon of the Great Rebel, which is a very good card for him to draw. Uh, he's going to attack for two first. Cody debating on blocking. Good call. Dickerson versus Hill. Uh, Boris Charm is going to shoot Cody for four down to nine, then the two from the... Prowess trigger will put Cody to or Dickerson to seven. Knowing these people by their first names, it is a little weird to call them by their last names because I've never had to do that. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this is a weird interaction, and it's going to happen a lot. You see a lot of times you see people with Michael playing each other. Uh, there's been Christinas that play each other, Toms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, here at hometown. So uh, that is something that. I need to get in the habit of is if there's two players pl with, with the same name, it's best to just call them by the last names. Um, a Jataxian Probe is going to knock Dickerson down to three, and then she's going to do it again, knocking her down to, or she goes to five from the first one, three to the, from the second, and she's just trying to find an out. Uh, it looks like she drew a land on this last one, possibly a windswept Heath, and that is not really what she wanted. Uh, she can make a couple of blockers with Ink Moth Nexus, and, uh, Nope. Instead, she's going to reveal her hand filled with pumps, and uh, that's going to be it. As we're going to go to a game two with uh, Dickerson leading. Or playing first, not leading. Uh, Cody Hill leads this match. So they're both going to sideboard. Uh, I have a decent idea of what's in both players' decks. I need to turn off my notifications. Uh, is that Thunderous Wrath? There's no way Cody's playing Thunderous Wrath. If Cody Hill is playing Thunderous Wrath, I just, I don't even know. Shout out to Keegan. Shout out to Jeb.